What's up, happy people? It's another great day to be alive. And I'm so, so glad you are here and have been rocking out with me during this series on The Cure. And if it's been blessing you, please share this with somebody. Send me an email, send me a message. Let me know how this is blessing you so I know if we can continue or move on. <laughs> but no, we're gonna stay here. It's really, really dope. Um, just recapping for those of you that have missed it. Uh, the first time we talked about this subject, we came from Luke 1, 9, uh, 9 through 2, I believe it was. And it basically said that we have power and authority. God called us to preach the kingdom and to be the cure to all diseases. And we went through a list of diseases such as COVID-19, diabetes, obesity, uh, self-sabotaging thoughts and things of that sort. And just to let you know, we have the cure both in a spiritual context, but what we're also doing is braiding in some psychological terms and terms terminologies so that way you can see how both our psychological, our cognitive, our brain, our mind works with that in the realm of the spirit as well. Because oftentimes we hear scriptures, we hear preachers, we hear different theologians say things, but sometimes we don't have the context we need to apply the word and see the benefits of the word and see the world around us or the world internally in us change. And so what I'm wanting to do with this whole series is to not just give you scripture, not just give you uh, uh, random information, but I want to make sure you have the tools necessary to understand the seven regions of your brain, understand the terms and terminologies as it relates to neurons and cells and things of that sort. So you understand how when you get a revelation, when you get a download, when you get a prophecy, when you study, when you learn how it's working in your brain and how information is being coded and imprinted on your mind and how it is retained. Um, and let me just share this while I'm just talking. Um, there's this connotation that as you get older, your brain stops working. That is a myth and it is not true. Yes, you can get older and you might feel like you start slowing down. That does happen naturally, but it is not true that your brain stops working. Hear me clearly. Your brain will work if you Work it. If you got somebody in your house, slap a neighbor, call your auntie, call your mama, call somebody, say neighbor, it'll work if you work it. So listen, what we're going to do today is kind of give you some information as it relates to your cognitive reserve between the ages of your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, and your 80s and beyond. And the reason I want to do that is because oftentimes some of you might be feeling like, well, I'm too old to do this, or I'm too young to do that, or my glory years are over. And I need you to know that that too is absolutely not true. It is never too late. If you woke up this morning, Morning. The fact that you see me, the fact that you hear me, the fact that you have breath in your body is a clear indication that God's not done. And in fact, he's just getting started. You have people like Joyce Myers, if I'm not mistaken, who started her ministry at age 60. And she is now, I think, in her 80s or something like that and is a multimillionaire preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to all those who will listen. So again, don't you dare think that you're too young or too old to do anything. You even have children. I don't have an example for you, but you have children who at a young age, in fact, Michael Jackson, we'll use that. He started with the Jackson 5 and his brothers when he was a young kid and grew up to be the man that we've known as basically the king of pop. So don't tell me you're too young or don't tell me you're too old. If you make up your mind, you can do whatever you put your mind to. You are one decision away from living the life of your dream. So make that decision, wake up, take your place, be that man, that woman you're called to be and realize that you have everything on the inside of you to be the answer to the world problems for your family, for your church, for your community or what have you. So again, what we're gonna do in this in this series or in this section of the series rather, is kind of go over some information as it relates to your cognitive functionality in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and all that. Why do I wanna do that? Because we have to understand as men and women of God, we have to preserve our bodies. We have to preserve our mind. Wouldn't it be a shame to have a goal and a dream 
and have the antidote that came by way of revelation for the world. But then you can't even watch it manifest because you did not take care of your mind, because you did not take care of your body. And I know this can be a little bit touchy because some people are like, well, I want to do me. I want to do what I want to do, how I want to do, when I want to do, blah, 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 blah. But you got to understand if God called you, then it is also your responsibility to take care of your temple. It is your responsibility as a conduit for God to make sure you are doing everything in your power to make sure you can see clearly, that you can hear clearly, that you can speak clearly. It is your responsibility to go back to school. It's your responsibility to go pick up a book and read. It's your responsibility to read the Bible. It is your responsibility because if you're called to lead people, if you're called to lead nations, if you're called to leave your community or your home or change the trajectory of your bloodline, you got to make sure your mind is sharp. And we cannot use the excuse, oh, I'm 50 now and I can't do it. Or I'm 60 now and I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's not too late. And here's the thing. Even if you're an individual who has made mistakes all your life, whether you were smoking, drinking, and messing up your cognitive reserve because those things do kill brain cells, it's not too late to make that change. Again, you are one decision away. One, 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 one. Just make that decision. But listen, I want to read a scripture real quick. Just to kind of help build some, 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 some context here. Psalms 91 and 16 just simply says, with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? In fact, I think it's Israel Houghton has a whole song that says with long life, he will satisfy me. In other words, God wants you to have long life. God died and gave up his life so that you could have everlasting life with him and through him. When he created you in your mother's womb in the book of Jeremiah, he said, I, I called you. I chose you. I've given you a plan. I've given you a purpose. God wants the best for us, y'all. But we got to want the best for us, too. God has given us everything we need to be successful. But we have to take time to figure out what those things are that he has given us. And how do we use them to be the cure, the answer, the problem solver, the history maker, the world changer, and all of those different things. So, again, get your pen, your paper. If you don't have it, get that. And I just kind of want to go over some information with you. So bear with me. Uh, as it relates to your cognitive functionality in your 20s and in your 30s. Your brain development has reached maturity. You should be able to solve problems. You should be able to reason. You should be able to process. You should be able to learn and remember new information. Let's even go before that. People think babies are too young to process information. But no, at the age of like two, three, four, five, they are like sponges, parents, Put your kids in front of educational information and teachings so that way they can begin to learn at an early, early age and develop healthy practices at that age. Because I'm telling you what I know. I have my nieces and nephews and they are brilliant children, but that's because they watch educational things. They're doing their homework. They sit together. They're on a schedule. They're on a plan and it works. So that way, when you get to your 20s and your 30s, you can see another level of heightened cognitive uh, uh, reserve and uh, being able to process information. So yeah, in your 20s and your 30s, you should be able to reason, learn, process, and remember information very, very quickly. Now, in your 30s, your learning and processing kind of changes just a little bit um, with the thinking speed. So let me just even tell you that if your thinking and processing slows down, that is okay. There are healthy uh, things that happen as you get old. And I, and I said it that way because that's a healthy decline rather than you use drugs and chemicals and stuff, <laughs> you know, to, to mess up your brain. But know that in your 30s, it is natural for the slowing down of your brain, but you can still work against that by keeping information in your mind and eating healthy and things of that sort. Let's go to your cognitive functionality in your 40s. In your 40s, your cognitive function and memory remain strong, although you might notice subtle changes in your ability to learn and remember new information. So you will see a change, but that doesn't mean your brain stopped working. So what do you do to counteract that? Again, healthy 
foods. Keep prayer in your mind. Keep focused. Read. Watch. Um, I'm a nerd, y'all. I watch the History Channel like my grandfather did. I used to look at him as a kid and be like, man, this is boring. You watching this all day, every day. But now here I am sitting up late at night watching that daggone History Channel like my granddaddy. But you know why? Because it's keeping my mind going. Remember I told you when we first started, your mind will work if you work it. So you got to work it. In your 50s, you may start to notice some mild forgetfulness. You know, you might feel like you can't recall a word from time to time. Um, you might not process skills or other executive functionalities um, as you once did, but you will see a gradual decline and that's healthy. In fact, let me just say this. If you misplace your keys because you're busy, nothing's wrong. But if you don't know, I don't know, if you're calling your ironing board your stove, you might want to seek medical counsel because at that rate, your cognitive reserve is messed up for whatever reason. Because I do also understand, too, that there are some things that happen in our mind that are hereditary um, that could have been caused by a disease of some sort and all of that. But again, remember, I told you in Luke 9, 1 through 2, God called you, gave you authority to uh, be the cure over all diseases. But again, I'm not going to be over spiritual and deep and not tell you that you don't have to make certain practices. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're talking about the brain. That's why we're talking about the seven regions of your mind. That's why we're talking about neurons and all these other different things. So that way you know how to make sure you are in great physical health, mental health, cognitive health, and all of that. So let's keep moving. Uh, in your 60s, uh, your memory and processing skills and other executive functions may continue to, de to decline. However, your comprehension of vocabulary and general knowledge should remain stable. So if you are fumbling over your words a little bit, that's fine. But I need you to know, beloved that at 60, you can still go to the nations. At 60, you can still write a book. At 60, you can still produce a song. At 60, you can still be the cure and the answer to the problems in the world today. Please don't you dare think because of your age or whatever's going on that you cannot function as the king and the queen God has called and designed you to be. You still can. Let's keep moving. We're going to our 70s. And in your 70s, you will start seeing more of a decline in some areas. But even then, you can keep going. I can keep going all the way to 80s and all that stuff. Y'all know what I'm saying. You can keep growing. You do not have to allow your age to stop you. That is a trick of the enemy. Whoever you are, wherever you are, please know that you can still do what God has called you to do. Be not weary. Don't be dismayed. If God gave you an idea, you see it in the Bible, Moses and all these other different individuals, they were well up in age, but they still do what they were called to do. You might say, well, I'm a mother of so many kids or I'm a father with all these different burdens or whatever. I'm telling you what I know. Change the atmosphere around you. Change the people around you. Change what you're listening to. In fact, one of my friends one day, I was, I was real stressed out, and one of my friends sent me these different sounds that were on YouTube, and there are sounds that literally produce healing in your body. So don't tell me because of your age you can't do a certain thing. You can listen to a certain sound and a song, and it will literally begin to move the neurons in your brain and cause healing to dispense throughout your body. Have you ever heard a sound singer, that of like a Whitney Houston or a, a, a Mariah Carey or somebody, and they hit a certain note and you were just like, oh my God, or what in the world? And it just made you so happy and it brought joy to you. Or you went into tears because sounds and frequencies and vibrations are real. In the African-American church, oftentimes we call it the anointing. And it is the anointing. But in addition to it being the anointing, it is also a scientifically and psychologically proven frequency that is released. And so going back to the sounds I told you I listened to that my friend sent to me, I was literally sleeping, y'all. And I played this these sounds and it released stress off of me. I woke up with so much energy and excitement to keep doing what I needed to do because I played these sounds in my ear. And sometimes we think it's taboo, like I ain't about to do that. That's witchcraft. No, it's not, y'all. There are doctors. There are psychiatrists. There are people out here. There are scientists who will tell you that this stuff is absolutely real. 
There are things, even with the radio, the radio has to be played at a certain frequency to even be played in the airways for us to hear. Because if it goes too high, it's too strong. Frequencies are real, y'all. Our mind is real, y'all. The way it works is real. So don't just hear spiritual texts and leaders and preachers preach, but not do your due diligence to study the workings of your mind and the workings of your age to figure out what you need to be doing. Again, if you just go to Google or, or, or type in certain things about your age, you can look at your age demographic and see, okay, at 60, statistically, my mind is supposed to start declining. So what then you need to do as a woman and a man of God is be strategic and use a strategy to work against the statistics. That's what we're called to do. So if they say your mind starts slowing down, then keep doing crossword puzzles. If they say your mind starts slowing down, go back to school, get a certification, get a degree, read a book, write a song, go do something, stay active. Oh, I got one for you. Go do some cardio. <laughs> Go work out because even when you work out and you move, it gets your juices flowing, it gets your mind going, it gets your energies going. Because here's the thing, for us in this world, especially as believers, we again are the answer to the problems. We are the cure. We are the solution. And what the enemy will try to do is cause us to have self-sabotaging thoughts, to limit ourselves, to think that we're too old, our time is over, we're a day late, we're a dollar short, and we don't have what we need to be successful to do what God called us to do. But that is a lie. I simply came today to encourage you that it is not too late. It is not over. You still have time. Listen, even if like Martin Luther King, for example, he had his famous speech, I have a dream. He didn't get to live to see the dream because he was assassinated. But that doesn't mean the dream doesn't go on. So even if you don't get to see the manifestation of that thing, does not mean you still can't write that vision and write it out for the next generation to take it and keep going. So we can go from glory to glory, new levels, new situations. We don't have to keep start starting over because of, of, of unplanned for deaths and things of that sort. So hear me and hear me clear, y'all. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care your zip code, your area code. I don't care your educational status. I don't care what was in your bloodline. I do not care. When God created you in your mother's room, he created you to not only being an answer for yourself, but he created you to be an answer for somebody else. He created you to be the cure. You are the answer for the world's problems. And I need you not to limit yourself because of your race, because of your educational status, because of your zip code, or any health issues. And I will say this too. I'm not saying anything to not be realistic. There are some of you that do have a, a, a reasonable or, or a legitimate health issues. Go to your doctor, see a psychiatrist, go get your medicine, do what you're supposed to do. But I also encourage you to do healthy things like eating vegetables, eating fruit, exercising and things of that sort because we got to make sure our temple is good. We got to make sure we are in right health because like Psalms 91 and 16 says, with long life, I will satisfy him. I don't want to have all this revelation and take it to the grave. I don't want to have all this education and take it to the grave. I don't want to pray day and night and go to conference after conference and event after event and tarry service and shut in after shut in and take it to the grave. I want to live a fulfilled life and I want you to live a fulfilled life as well. Don't give up, y'all. Don't give in, y'all. Don't quit, y'all. Keep fighting, keep pressing, keep doing what's necessary, both naturally and spiritually, so you can run this race and be the answer to the problems in the world. There are children waiting on you. There are ministries waiting on you. There are political positions waiting for you to fill them. There are things in this world waiting on you. We need you. Do not count yourself out. We need what you have. And it's my hope and my belief that you will see that you have value, you have worth, and nothing that you has been through is here to take you out. No, Romans 8, 28 says all things are working together. That means the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. Could it be that God waited for you to be in your 50s and 60s because he wanted you to just mature a little bit? Could it be he didn't let you blow up in your 20s because he knew you would mess it up? 
Could it be that he wanted you to wait till you had all your children first and got them through college for you to now release your ministry because he knew you would need a support system? And, or he just needs you to be an example or a leader. Could it be that God just did it in this time frame because he blocked something that you couldn't see? I understand that in life, we have time schedules. Uh, and a lot of females do it where they'll be like, I want to be married by this age. I want to be out of school by this age. I want to do this at this age. And there's nothing wrong with setting a timeline for your life. But also realize that there's a timeline that God has for you as well. And if your timeline contradicts his timeline, then you will definitely see a clash. But know the difference in the, in, in the meanings of time. God will never put you in something that you cannot handle. So in conclusion, I just need you to know, I don't care if you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, your 90s and beyond. It is not too late to do what God has called you to do. People need you and they are waiting on you. Release what you have in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this word. We thank you for this revelation. We thank you for this time for us to share together, to have dialogue. And God, it's my hope and my prayer that these your people will rise up and not allow their age their zip code, their circumstance, or anything of that sort to hinder them from being who you've called them to be. Father, I decree and declare that they will write their book. They will write their song. They will start that organization. They will go back to school. They will pursue that relationship. They will mend the relationships and they will build and release what they are supposed to release in this earth. And I decree and declare that you will not die young. You will not die premature and you will not die with purpose still locked on the inside of you. But I wake up the purpose in you. I speak to the encryption of your DNA and I command you to come forth. I command that dream to come forth, that book to come forth, that song to come forth, that antidote to come forth. I decree and declare the balm on the inside of you, the cure on the inside of you, the answer on the inside of you will come forth. I do not care your age, your zip code, your political position, your geographical location. It does not matter. If God said it, we believe it and that settles it. And if it's God's will, it's his bill. So Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We honor you for this. And we just decree and declare that great days are indeed ahead. If you believe that, say amen, amen, amen. Thank you all for tuning in. Again, if you want to sow, you can sow at dollar sign Levi W. Harrell. That's L-E-V-I. H-A-R-R-E-L-L, -L, and everything that you sow will just go into the continuing of the mission and the gospel of Jesus Christ. If this blessed you, share it with somebody, leave me some comments, talk to me, inbox me, email me. I want to know how you're doing. Take care. Take care of your mental health, your spiritual health, and your soul. Love you.